Hello and welcome to another model building workshop. I'm Mr. Allen coming to you from the Smith Hill Library here in Providence, Rhode Island, part of the Community Libraries of Providence. Yes. And today we're going to do a what's in the box. I'm going to take a look at this D Day set, the Air Assault in 172nd scale by Airfix. So look at all that artwork there. This is one of these. Uh, pretty massive kits with everything in it. As you can see, there's a whole lot of paint, there's brushes, there's glue, and there's one, two, three, four models, there's figures, and there's a base. And you get a better look at that at the back of the box, which shows you all the fun things that are included in this package. Look at all that stuff. Now, this is 172nd scale, so it is going to be a wee bit small. And let's have a look. This brings me back to my childhood when Airfix did a lot of these kits back then that I really enjoyed. So this is kind of a trip back. All right, let's see what's in here. Lots <laughs> and lots of stuff. So, start out with a little canisters of paint, some paint brushes, a tube of Hornby plastic cement there from Britain. Lots of different types of paints. Now the one challenge I've had with these paints is trying to open these bottles without the paint going bleh everywhere, so be forewarned. That could be a bit of a challenge if you're going to use these. Uh, they are also numbered, so they got the Heller Humbrol numbers on them, I don't know if you can see that, but the numbers are on the top of the paint bottles. Try to dig all this stuff out. I mean, there's a lot in here, so I mean, there's an awful lot to unpack, <laughs> quite literally. Um, all right, so an example of what you're looking at in 172nd scale is that here's your figures. They are pretty tiny. For those of you familiar with 172nd, then you're you're not surprised. And this is the soft plastic. So that tends to be a little tricky for painting. You don't want to move these around too much because the paint's going to just flake right off. So the bicycle riders are kind of fun, huh? But if you can look closely, you are going to see that there's flash on these figures that you're going to need to clean up with a very, very sharp, clean uh, X-Acto blade or something of, the, of that sort to get some of this excess plastic off. And these are the RAF ground crew personnel. That's what this kit basically is. It's in all kinds of different ground crew folks and carrying guns, weapons, and there is a trailer that you have to put together. in here somewhere. <laughs> now carrying guns. I've got a camera here, but it looks, yeah, a reconnaissance camera he's trying to load. Female officer there. And then here's the trailers that you have to put together. There's there, and it's a rocket, although the rocket is Pretty bent because it is soft plastic after all. And you have some guys that are adding ammo into the aircraft. And you got some pilots that are standing there as well. The thing with this that's so impressive is that you keep emptying stuff out of this box because there's a lot in here. It's amazing. So here's the base. 
you know, thin plastic, or kind of a vacuum form style. But you get the tarmac part. Get a dirt road. You get some tree trunks you get to work on. Pretty decent terrain there. Park the airplane. If you look at the box there, you can see an example of how to set that up. Obviously, they don't use all the figures in this set, but they use enough so you get an idea of what you can do. And I noticed that they looks like they uh, cut the bases off and glued them right directly to the uh, plastic there. Of course, that's all up to you. You want to do with your set. Here's the instruction booklet. I give an example of the back for painting options of the figures and the base. And they have the paints with the numbers so you know which number jar to, to grab. And so they're also named, so you have that that option too, which is nice when they give you the names of the colors and the numbers both. Sometimes they don't always do that. So in this set of the D-Day Air Assault, you get the Hawker Typhoon Mark 1B aircraft, which is pretty much the uh, main RAF ground attack plane for that time of the war. You get the standard Tilly, which is a uh, truck, and a BSA M20 motorcycle, which I'm figuring is going to be extremely tiny, because we saw the size of the, uh, there's the bicycles, right? So we'll see what that looks like. Uh, there is a Bedford MWC or MWD truck in here. That's the diorama base and the figures that I just showed you. And here's some decals here for the Typhoon and the trucks. So these, you know, these sets are pretty good for kids, although I am curious how these decals are going to work with some kids because the striping can be a little frustrating, but uh, who knows, maybe it looks like they're pretty nicely done, so maybe they will fit without too much fuss on this plane. I remember having issues with those types of things in the past, although it's been a long time since I've try doing any invasion stripes as Normandy, those D-Day stripes on an aircraft. And it got to the point where I just generally avoided doing the D-Day period because I hated doing the, doing the striping. So, it's a Typhoon's assembly. Pretty much standard for a Airfix kit. I'm not sure how easy this would be for a kid. I haven't built one of these. I built a few uh, Airfix aircraft uh, of these this new generation, as I call them, uh, this resurgent Airfix with all their you know new moldings, and it varies. Some of these can be tricky, and some of these could be a dream to put together. Uh, the detail is pretty good. Um, they do make nice models. And they're generally simplified construction. It, it varies from kit to kit. Some can be a little more challenging than others. Like I found the Spitfire to be pretty good. Uh, I found the FW-190 to need a lot of cleanup and a lot of good uh, work with a uh, X-Acto blade for some of the cutting some of those pieces out off the tree. And uh, I found the Mustang had a few issues, but uh, nothing horrible. But Anyway, that's just my experience. I mean, for experienced modelers, it's not a big issue, but for someone younger, it could be a bit of a challenge to work with around some of those issues. Um, and this looks pretty straightforward, but, but, you know, who knows? But it looks good. I like how it's got this... Uh, This floor piece is kind of intriguing. So I think that also forms the wheel wells for, for underwing as, as well. 
And this has the ability so you can open up the uh, the gun panels there so you can get at the interior of the, so that you can make the ground crew work on it if you wish. And it looks like it's got a choice of it does. It has a choice of either installing the rockets you know, the anti-tank rockets here or some bombs. So you have an option there which is interesting. I'm familiar with it with the rockets, but uh, bombs are different. That's interesting. And here's your painting and detail instructions. And they give you all of these stencil markings too if you want to use all of that. Depends how detailed you want to get with the decals, because as you can see, those little red <laughs> indicators there, there's an awful lot of decals you can put on this kit if you so desire. So there you go. And then we're going to get into the, uh, the Tilly and the motorcycle. Again, this is in 70 second scale, so it's not going to be very big. And the motorcycle looks like it's <laughs> this is it for construction of the motorcycle, right? Yeah. Two steps and you're pretty much done. Because <laughs> it's got to be tiny. We'll take a look in a moment. And then you get into the Bedford truck. Which again is a fairly standard construction. Although, there's a lot more parts of these kits than I was expected for the size. I mean, there is an engine and a tra transmission and so forth. For a truck, it's not going to be like that big, so that's, I mean, it's not major, but, you know, but it's there, right? Hmm. Not sure what that is here. This is a piece. Not sure what this is. This page suddenly pops in there. I'll have to go look at these trees and see if this cannon, which I think went with a Jeep kit according to the top of that page, it's step 23 <laughs> of some other kit that just seems to be in there. So I guess it's how you can build a cannon. I don't see that mentioned anywhere on the box, so that's intriguing. I'm curious if that's in there. And then you have an option here of the, uh, you have to pay attention for the Bedford truck to continue. You have a choice of a water tank or a standard truck with a canvas top. You can do either or with this. Which is kind of intriguing. So you could do the, the box truck or the water truck. And then the painting guide, if you did this version, or the tank up there, done in a earth brown and a, or an earth brown, so it looks like more khaki, yeah, khaki. Dark earth and black. Black camouflage effect on there. Interesting. Alright, let's take a look at some of these trees. So here's all the parts there. Oh, I can get this thing open. I'm going to pause and look for some tools to open these things up. All right. 
windows. All right, so you get the idea of the size of that. The tiny steering wheel there. Engine. Yeah, and here's the motorcycle, such as it is. And it's interesting because the spokes would be so tiny they just don't bother to make them. It just, it's implied, basically. Even the tires are weighted. I think that's interesting. Now, these are impressive for that scale. Wow. I think they're going to be pretty good. Kits, the airplanes. <laughs> Canopy, which is something with kids that have to watch this because they have a tendency to throw this away because they don't see that there's glass in there. Had that happen a lot for some reason. So, okay, there's the rockets in the bottom wing. Is that floor piece? And it's got the wheel wells included, so that's a pretty cool feature. It's got the bombs, which I find intriguing. I don't know why, because I'm so used to seeing this thing with the rockets that the bombs almost seem uh, exotic. <laughs> it's usually the way around, <laughs> but interesting. The racks there. See the, the doors to the wheels, looks like those are closed. Yeah, the open ones are open. on that tree there. And then the other half of the fuselage. Inside for the guns where the ammo is. And your pilot figure. So, like I said, the, the detail on these Airfix kits is pretty good. And, uh, some have complained about the uh, panel lines being a little bit uh, overdone, but I think they look good, especially when you put some paint on there. I think they do a, a nice job. That's just my opinion. But anyway, that's a uh, quick look at what's in the box for this uh, D-Day Air Assault kit. A box with lots of stuff and lots of fun. Okay, we'll see you guys soon on the next Model Building Workshop. Keep on building.